Hey everybody, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good. I am doing great. So I am here with a Jackson guitar, and this is part of the Kramer Dollar Bill Dollar Bill Kramer guitar. The same owner who owns that one owns this one here too. And it's a beautiful guitar. I really love the way this thing looks. Got a few little minor things going on. A couple of scratches, a little bit of a chip over here. You can start, you can kind of see the yellow paint underneath the red or orange. Uh, I got to see if I got some touch-up paint that'll match that, and I get that filled in for him. But as you can see, I got the Floyd Rose or Tremolo. Take it off. Got middle pickup or the humbucker taken out, and I'm in the process of removing the two single coils, which are EMGs. These are the Hertz. And then in the bridge position, we have an EMG81, which I already have out. The EMG81 is going into the Kramer guitar, and this is getting a actual Floyd Rose instead of the Floyd Rose Special that Jackson puts on these that are Jackson labeled. This is getting an actual Floyd Rose. I've already kind of fitted it, and it will work. Uh... I have a different set of pickups that are going on this. Now, I'm not sure the brand. All he says is that they are, this is taped shut. Not sure of the brand. How much tape did you put on here? Let's see here. Yeah, I'll have to look at the serial number on these to see what they are. They look like they're pretty much brand new, never been used. The wires aren't discolored or anything as far as the wiring goes. The holes over here don't look like there's been any springs pressed up against the plastic. They look like they're brand new pickups. So these are going on here. I got one zebra, or are they all cream color? Oh, they're all cream color including the humbucker. I thought maybe the humbucker was a zebra stripe, but nope, it's not. Beautiful. I really enjoy seeing uh, guitars like this, you know, that have been either customized or uh, from the factory, you know, some type of a customization. They, they really look cool. They really look nice. And, you know, you can tell that this has been played by just by looking at the frets and stuff. And there's not really any eh, there's a tiny bit of wear in the frets not much at all but you can see that just by the way the frets look this thing's been played plus it's got a few little scratches in here and there not a big deal so this had an active system in it here's the battery that was wrapped in there somebody did some changing in here as I can see that there was a ground wire going from each cavity into the control area and right now what I want to do is desolder desolder this thing now one thing that, that I have found in the past with some guitars that the wiring and I'm going to go and kind of bring you in here and show you what I'm talking about as far as a couple of things go So number one, you know, this is kind of a pretty shitty soldering job, all right? And number two, where did it go? There's this one here, I believe it was. Uh, let's see, nope, it was this one here. All right, so there is a piece, one of the strands of the ground wire the way that they kind of heat shrunk and you know did this here splicing in one area and making another area longer but there is a hair you can see it right there a ground wire which is very really, really close to where the tone control is and you know that could touch anything in this whole thing even though it's a ground it can ground itself out if it was, you know, arranged. Now this one here, kind of like the same thing. It's got some broken wires, some little fuzzies sticking out of the wire. And uh, even though this one here is a little bit further 
towards the middle it's not really going to touch nothing but yeah they can cause an issue or a problem later on so I could replace the output jack with a standard output jack or I could just remove the ground wire from it that's not going to make any difference as far as playability and working normal functioning of this guitar um, otherwise yeah it's just pretty much swapping out and maybe replacing some pots I don't know because I don't see a tone cap over here at all and I'm kind of wondering how this would work if it was plug if it's connected right into the same output or input no so it's an input you got your input here from your bridge neck and uh, middle and then this is your output you got your output going over here and then you have two outputs on this guitar to your jack you have one from the middle post on the volume and one from the middle post hmm that is kind of interesting so I'll have to kind of figure that out and see how that's actually going to work I don't think this was an active thing um, so yeah I may have to get a hold of the owner and ask about this of how he wants this thing to be wired. I'm sure this thing was a one, two, three, four, five to five way selector switch. I wonder if they all worked. But yeah, this is kind of like a shitty, poor ass soldering job. All right, so I talked to the owner. The owner gave me the okay to go ahead and strip out all the electronics and start from scratch so what i got going on is a cts pot for the volume a push pull for the tone i got a cap over here for the tone control he's got two single coils and one humbucker that i can split or do whatever i want with it but as you can see right now the back of this doesn't look so shiny anymore it's because i am sanding out a lot of the minor scratches that are on here a lot of the deeper scratches like there's one right here and there's one right here I can't do anything about I they're just I don't want to try it to try to get them out although this one I don't feel with my fingernail anymore I don't know how thick this clear coat is because I didn't apply this clear coat so the minor scratches that were all over here came out as far as doing the wet sanding goes but I don't trust how thick the clear coat is to try to get that one out so I've got the top of it pretty much buffed out and there were some scratches going on over here that I ended up removing oh, we got some water on here that's the bad thing about wet sanding so I got the scratches that were going on over here basically taken care of like I said there's some deeper scratches there's one over here that I could not get out and I'm not going to try to attempt to get it out just because again I don't know how deep or how thick the clear coat is and it's got a nice reflection over here of the lights you can kind of see the texture of the light fixtures that are on the ceiling I love when I do my buffing so I ended up putting a little bit of touch up paint inside of here as you kind of see it's still showing more of the yellow that's underneath it so I have to thicken it up and add some more touch up paint to it in order to get rid of that and then put a drop of clear under now when I do touch ups like that uh, I do what's called drop fill and the reason why I do I even do this on automobiles as well when I do touch up paint on, on cars when you have a chip the surface of the paint that is on the edges of that chip, you know, around the edges of where the chip paint came off of, are loose. So when I do drop fill, I get kind of close to the edge of the chipped area without going over the paint that is still there that it hasn't chipped out. What that does is the paint will seep underneath that chip and kind of bonding or rebonding that uh, loose paint back to the surface that it's on and it helps with uh, you know not that chip not getting bigger later on. So small amount of paint a little bit at a time fill it until the color is where it should be and it's not very transparent anymore and then put a drop of clear coat on top of that 
wet sand it, polish it out. You may notice a difference in color somewhat because you got old paint and new paint. Now, luckily I was able to somewhat match this orange that's around the sides of here. It's not really a red, it's more of an orange. And uh, hopefully that will end up disappearing enough to where you don't notice it anymore once I get done. So what I wanna do right now is, you guys with headphones on right now are really gonna love this, but I wanna buff off the back of this thing and get it back shined up the way it was. Now. I am not sharing the rubbing compounds that I use, and uh, yeah, it's my little secret. So I'm going to go ahead and start dabbing the rubbing compound in the areas that I sanded. And, well, if you've got headphones on, turn the volume down. Now it never takes one buffing when you're polishing something out. It never really takes one time going over it and achieving the look that you're wanting to accomplish. So I don't even bother wiping this down. I already know that, well, it's gonna need another buffing after I get done doing it. And the reason why I'm doing the whole surface instead of just the areas, because I want all the blend in to look like there isn't like, uh, old paint here and new polished paint here. This way you don't see a break between the two and it's all polished up the same way. Okay. Sorry for you headphone users out there. So let's kind of give this thing a polishing now. Which I will go over this whole guitar after it's put together. And that scratch that was over here is hardly noticeable now. Well, I can still see a little bit of it, but. lot better than what it was. Remnants is of rubbing compound, get rid of that. And all these scratches here, I probably could have sanded a little bit more to get rid of them. A lot of the ones that were over here. So there's still some scratches inside of it, but it's not as bad as it was. Again, this back of the guitar was a lot worse than the front of it. And these scratches are kind of deep. I don't want to go through the clear coat because I don't know how much clear is actually on this thing. The one thing I've never done before is burn through a clear coat. So I don't know what that's like. And the bad thing about burning through a clear coat is, is that, well, you gotta re-clear it now. But it is a lot better than what it was. Still has some scratches in it, but yeah. I'm gonna wipe this side off, because this side got some smudging and smears from some of the rubbing compound being in the cracks. All right, so I'll be ready to do a wiring on this now. So the nice thing about wiring it up or polishing this thing when all the electronics and everything are off of it because you can just go over a flat surface and not worry about going around things, especially when you're trying to go around a knob or something, you don't really get that close to it because you don't want to hit the knob. Uh, you can spin it and end up breaking the pot because of that. So yeah, so I'm gonna wipe out all this over here. The nice thing about this guitar here is that uh, from what I've been feeling and the way this looks, they did a beautiful job on beautiful job on the uh, 
the inside of the cavities, it's not pitted, it's nice and smooth, there's no, uh, I mean, it's just really nice. They did a beautiful job at uh, finishing the inside of the cavities over here to where, you know, it's not lumpy, bumpy, and everything else. Even the control cavity over here, it's really nice. All right, so these pickups here come with the rubber on the bottom of them, and I'm not going to use those. The screws themselves are about the same width, so they should fit in the holes with no problems. Yeah, pretty much. gives me a nice clean look over here instead of having two straggly wires it gives me a nice clean look now I'm not going to cut off any of the wires the wires are going to stay pretty much the length that they are Are not as thick. Oh, actually, they are. The oh boy. So these pickups are actually taller than the EMGs. So hopefully that doesn't become a problem. I'm gonna set up on this thing. Flip this over, and here's your humbucker. Here are all the ground wires. All right, so here is the here's the bridge, uh, the neck, the middle, and the bridge. So these I want to tie off. Kind of put these off to a side over here. Put a piece of tape. I want to get these grounds organized first. All right, so here are all my grounds. I got four of them here. So what I'm going to have to do is get them all to equal lengths, strip them all, solder them all at once. And I'm going to find a spot inside this cavity because it doesn't look like there's no, well, maybe right there is a screw hole to ground out that cavity. So that'll end up working out. I got my wire, my screw right here for that. All right, so next is just going to be, you know, wiring this thing up. And you guys have seen me do that plenty of times, and this is probably boring as fuck. So I'm going to get off of this thing and just start going to town on this thing so I don't have to explain myself and get to things going a lot quicker. So next video will be this thing done.